Okay guys, part three of this fucking nightmare of a motorbike. So initially I'm just, I found the connection block for the crank position sensors. It has got four sensors, flash the wiring diagram on the screen. I'm just back probing the sensors just as an initial, I'm just feeling my way into it if you see what I mean. And I have just discovered something. I don't know whether it's that relevant, but possibly maybe. Let me just show you on the oscilloscope screen. Let me start it. Uh... So I'll just go through these sensors one by one. So that's one of them. Look how much bigger the amplitude of that signal is compared to that one. That's one of them, that's another one, that's another one, and that's another one. So those two are low amplitude, that one and that one, compared to that one and that one. Is that relevant in some way? I have no idea. I think, okay, I think what I might do, you know we've got this slow cranking problem, I'm just wondering if something's going on behind that generator cover, where the pickups are, because that's where the starter motor gears and stuff are as well. I wonder whether it's worth pulling that cover off just and, eye and eyeball it, although we don't have a gasket for it, so then, I think this calls for a cup of tea. I just, watching that video back, I just changed the voltage scale on the scope slightly, to make it a bit more obvious. So that's the low amplitude one. That's the other one. Quite a difference. Hmm, I wonder. I'm just seeing, because I can't remember, there's a little inspection cap there. Are the timing marks on the flywheel? Put a timing light through there and maybe, I fucking hell, I can't remember. It's 20 years since I ever had a cover off one of these. Probably longer. Oh my fucking days, oil everywhere. I wasn't expecting that. I thought that was just a cover. Hang on, let me get a, let me get some sort of receptacle. Okay. Ooh. It's a bit weird. What is that? So far out. Should it be like that? Are you getting that, guys? That nut is... That doesn't look right. To me. Okay. I'm just going to pull this cover off. You know, we've got this... Um, That just doesn't look normal. Let me get you a closer shot of that. You tell me if that looks normal or not. That looks odd to me. What I was going to do was I was going to take this plug out, rotate the crank, see if there were firing and timing marks on the flywheel. I think given that that looks weird, you know, you can't get a socket on there. What the fuck? I'm just going to pull this cover off, see what's going on. I think that's the best plan. I'll lose all the oil. 
but I got the feeling it probably needs an oil change. Oh, come on now. Got the bolt left in. I think I've got a bolt left in. Oh, and I've left the bolts in the tray full of oil. Seriously? Amateur mistake. Well, the gasket is covered in black silicon goo. Does that mean this cover's been off recently? I don't know. Oh god, there goes starter gears. Okay. Interesting. Don't really want to leave that hang on the wires. Let's rest that back on there a second. Take this cover off. So it does appear to all be in order. Nothing uh, loose or anything. This piece I think is normal. It just, yeah, if I got a magnet on it, it just sits in there and the cover holds it on like a little baffle. So I think that's normal. Uh, I'm just gonna take the cover off this. What the hell was that? I'm just gonna take the cover off this. Um, off the wiring for these pickups and have a better look at them. Yeah, so the pickups, two separate pickups, two on each, and when they all look sort of in order, I'll do some static resistance tests on those in a minute as well okay guys just a little bit of static resistance testing I've given these a bit of a wash down interestingly sure we'll get this uh, that one is says four and two on it that one says one and three. Oh my fucking days there's the compressor sorry Jesus you think I would have Learned my lesson by now. Turn the compressor off. So, yeah, it says on the pickups, they're in pairs. There's sort of two pickups in each block. That one does cylinder four and two. And that one does cylinder three and four. Now, <clears throat> in case you didn't know the way the cylinders are numbered, so this is the front of the bike here and this is the back of the bike. So, back left is one, front left is two, back right three, front right four. So one and three, sorry, my brain is hurting. Um, so th basically rear cylinders, front cylinders. Again, it's sort of, yeah, timing wise, it suggests that maybe anyway. So just the spec, let's just do these resistance measurements. So. The spec is 110 ohms, I'll flash it on the screen, plus or minus 10%. So that's the first one. Let my meter catch up. That's 100, yeah, that's fine, 113 ohms. Next one, 112, next one. 108 and the final one okay so certainly statically they test okay the other thing to test is to make sure that there's no leak to ground at all on any of these technically that one is the common so if I go into that one and I test 
there was any leak to ground I'd see it there and there isn't. Okay, so they test all right statically. Where next? You might think I'm a bit crazy, but I got burnt once. I got owned by a motorbike for days and days and what had happened because it's critical where the flywheel fits on the crankshaft it was a what bike was he can't remember now anyway Woodruff gear had sheared off and the flywheel had turned slightly and I'm a bit paranoid of that it's almost certainly not that but I'm just going to check that quickly and then yeah we'll have to make a bit of a plan okay flywheel removal Oh my god, I need a new airline. It's got a leak. <coughs> Assuming, of course, I've got... The fuck is that? Is that normal? Okay, somebody explain to me what that bit of wire is. It looks like it should be there, but... Okay, it is a school day. Have I got a puller? That is the question. It's a three bolt type. In fact, we might be able to see without pulling it. You can see the Woodruff key down in there possibly. Where's my torch? Yeah, that looks fine. I can see the Woodruff key down in there. We could also, I, I noticed on this, we've got top to centre two there, look, T2 and T1 there. And there's also some firing marks. I think what I'm going to do is I'll get my timing light if I can remember where the hell it is. I haven't used it for years. In fact, I think maybe I <laughs> loaned it to somebody and I haven't got it back. That might pose a little bit of a problem, but we could, yeah, we could put a little paint dot on the timing mark and compare front and rear. Do you see what I'm saying with the timing marks through the little window with the engine running? I'm convinced the ignition timing's wrong. And I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, well, Jim, it's got a different ECU on it. Maybe there's something going on with that. Maybe there is. I don't know. And also we have a little bit of a question mark over the amplitude of the two um, signals from the crank position sensors, don't we? And I, I wasn't paying attention when I was taking those measurements with the scope I wasn't paying attention to which two had the low amplitude signal. Be interesting, wouldn't it, if it was the the rear two excuse me, the rear two cylinders. I'm gonna get a gasket ordered for this. Put all this back together. New gasket for there too. The oil's pretty manky, so we'll change the oil. Yeah, and then let's get a timing light and see if we can verify timing. I did think. I was thinking of how I could do it with the oscilloscope. Sorry, I'm going to waffle a little, a little bit. Uh, what I could easily look at with the oscilloscope is the... Uh, we've got two known good cylinders, if you like. The front two cylinders are obviously somewhere near correct in terms of ignition timing because it runs nicely on those front two cylinders. What I was going to do, I was going to get a reference between... the with my Pico scope. I could take a firing event from the ignition coil, either primary or secondary, and overlay it against the crank position, the ignition pickup signals from the crankshaft. You know those ones we were just doing the static tests on, and see where how the firing event lines up with the crank position event on the front two cylinders, and then compare it to the rear two. Does that make sense? Oh God, I hate it. Don't say, does that make sense? It's annoying. Don't do it. Does that make sense? Fucking hell, I need a beer. Um, in fact, I think it's nearly beer o'clock. Uh, okay, I'm going to find me timing light. I'm going to order some gaskets. 
and we will reconvene in the morning. Awesome. See you later. We're back. A couple of days have gone by. It's back together, sort of. This cover's on. The carburetors are now back the right way around. I've done oil and filter. Yeah, so where are we up to? Let's just recap slightly. So I've had this cover off, and I'm sure a lot of you were screaming at me, saying, Jim, why have you got the cover up? Why are you bothering taking the cover off? Well, a couple of reasons, let me explain. There was this little baffle, which clearly is easy to remove, so you can get to the nut to turn the crankshaft. You don't know what you don't know. I didn't know that baffle came out. Clearly it does. So I couldn't get my socket on the crank, so that was slightly confusing. I wanted to turn the crankshaft and look to see what timing marks there were on the flywheel through this little hole. And because I couldn't get the, my socket on the end of the crank, I thought, ah, oh, fuck it, I'll just pull the cover off. Also in the back of my mind was a potential issue with loose ignition pickups because I've had pickups come loose in the past not on these and you know we were getting that low amplitude signal on the on the anyway so I wanted to eyeball the, the pickups anyway and then also the other thing that was oh here comes my kids to interrupt me the other thing that was on my mind was the gear the reduction gears for the starter motor and I just wanted to eyeball those because I have in the past had the casing break and the B extra resistance from, for the starter motor to drive the crank. So yeah, I just there were multiple reasons all sort of added together. I wanted to get this cover off. Anyway, it's back together now. What we're going to do next? I'm going to. I've marked the the pickup wires. I've marked which ones are which, if that makes sense, with these little flag labels. I just want to back probe this connector and see. I don't think it's going to change the sort of diagnostic process, but I'm just curious as to which of the sensors is, are the higher amplitude ones versus the, the lower amplitude. I think probably what's happening is, you know, we've got those blocks of pickups, sort of two pickups together offset slightly. There's three wires coming out of them. There's a common, and then there's the output for each sensor. I'm, I'm, imagining that it's probably the sort of architecture of the sensor the way the sensor's wired that's causing the high and low amplitude of signals i'm assuming that the one block of sensors has got a high and a low amplitude and the other side's got on a high and a, high and a low amplitude am um, i making sense stop saying that um let's hook the scope up and see what we got so interestingly guys, if you can hear me over this row, see that's a lower amplitude one and that's a higher amplitude one. Well the, the low amplitude ones are the front two cylinders that it's running okay on. So that's a slightly higher amplitude. Lower. That's a front. That's a, that's a front cylinder. That's a front cylinder. That's a rear cylinder, and that's a rear cylinder. Turn this off. just stuck on the screen there because there's a trigger set in case you're wondering um i'm not going down that rabbit hole anymore I, 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 yeah i was expecting it to be what am i trying to say basically one of the block of sensors i've got a bigger amplitude than the other block it's the the cylinders it's running okay on the front two cylinders that has the, the lower amplitude signal. I don't think that's quite right, but that's not, I don't think, the reason for the issues. So the next thing is mark the, did we discuss this already? Mark the flywheel with paint marks. So this rear cylinder has a top dead center mark and the front cylinder has a TDC mark. So this is cylinder one, this is cylinder two. 
we know that cylinder two is running sort of all right. This one is completely dead and it pops through the, ex through the exhaust pipe occasionally. So I'm trying to, the next thing I'm going to try and do is determine um, ignition timing. Now I can't find, did I mention this? Maybe I did. I can't find my blooming snap on timing light. It's missing in action somewhere. It's not amongst the multitude of plastic boxes with things in that I own. Amazon to the rescue. Um, 60 pounds I think it was. Um, but it'll do the job because it's got an advanced adjustment. I don't want to go into it massively but what I'm going to do I'm going to mark the top dead centre mark on the flywheel, okay? And for those of you that aren't familiar what a timing light does, you have a have a positive and negative to the battery, and then you have a pickup on the HT lead, okay? Every time the spark plug fires, when you pull this trigger, there's a little strobe light that fires out of here. So if I mark a paint mark on the flywheel, when the engine is at top dead centre, well, there's a thing called it at there's a thing called ignition advance, so the spark plug is firing before the piston gets to top dead centre, which is the top of its stroke. It fires a number of degrees before that to allow the fuel to ignite and start to burn. The faster the engine is running or revving, the more advance you have. At idle, you don't have a lot of advance, so pretty close to top dead centre, if I pull the trigger on this and I shine my light, I should see the paint mark sort of basically freezes the mark because it only lights it up, speed of light, etc. Only lights the mark up when it's opposite its little indicator on the crankcase. So I should be able to see the top dead centre mark. And then what you can do is you can dial in degrees of advance. So the way it would work is I'll keep adding advance on here um, in degrees until the top dead centre mark exactly lines up with the mark on the crankcase. That way, and then I can read off the number of degrees of advance I have at idle. I was going to say, does that make sense? But I'm not going to say <laughs> say that. I um, need to get some t-shirts with, does that make sense on the bloody... No, let's not do that. So, that's my plan. I'm going to mark... Top dead centre number one, top dead centre number number two, I'll probably use different colours. I'll use what colour paint pens I've got. I'll use a yellow and a red, I think. Probably come out quite well on the on the strobe light. Let me mark that now and let's bring you back in and let's see if we've got some weirdness going on with the ignition timing. Timing light, all hooked up. Bat battery positive and negative, induction clamp on number two cylinder. I've got paint marks on the crankshaft on the flywheel. I've got a yellow mark for cylinder one, red mark for cylinder two. We're going to run it. I'm going to shine my strobe light through this little inspection hole here. It's going to be next to impossible to film because there's likely going to be oil spraying out of here. I'll probably leave this camera where it is and try and get my mobile phone a bit closer and get you a shot of it. But basically, when I pull this trigger, Every time the spark plug fires, we get a strobe light coming out of here and it'll make the timing mark on the crankshaft appear to be stationary. I'm on zero degree. This is going to be maybe too much to explain here, but to get the top dead centre mark to line up perfectly with the mark on the crankcase, I'm likely going to have to add degrees of advance here because the engine isn't firing the spark plug at top dead centre exactly, it's firing it in advance, hence ignition advance, so it's firing it slightly before top dead centre to give the fuel air mixture time to get burning and the combustion chamber pressure to increase as it passes the top point of top dead centre and pushes the piston back down. So I'll need to get the TDC mark to line up with the strobe light on the mark on the crankcase, I'll need we could look it up in the workshop manual, whatever the degrees of advance for this engine is at takeover, I'll need to dial into here to get the marks to line up. I'll start, I'm not going to go bother looking it up, I'm going to start with 10 degrees and I can, if the, if the mark doesn't line up perfectly, I can plus or minus and get it somewhere near right and that will then give us the 
degrees of ignition advance. And then the other thing I thought was, guys, I am aware that there's a vacuum advance on this engine. Uh, yeah, and I have been balancing the carbs without this pipe connected. I realise that. I realise that that's likely given me maximum maximum advance. It's not going to stop it running on these rear cylinders, which is why I wanted to say that. Right, let's get this started. Shine this light in there. Spray oil everywhere. See if we can verify timing on this cylinder first, which is the red mark. And then the... I'm doing this cylinder first because I want to make sure my theory is correct. I should be able to see the red paint mark here. And then we'll move over to the bad cylinder. And if the ignition timing is correct, we should see the yellow paint mark on here. Right, yo. Right, prepare to get sprayed with oil. I'm not sure, there might be some funkiness with the frame rate of the camera and things, so you might not even see the strobe, I don't know. Let's see. Put that on the bench. Oh, I can see a red mark, but it's not lining up. Let's add some more advance on here. Wrong way. Go 15 degrees. Should probably go look it up, shouldn't I? Yeah, that's about right. Uh, it's moving around quite a bit, but then they often do. Let me see if I can get a shot with my mobile phone. Here we go. We're sort of getting that. There's some funky stuff going on with the frame rate of the cameras and stuff. But you get the idea. Let me turn it off. Okay, that was reasonably successful, apart from oil spraying out of the hole, which is kind of par for the course, really. So I'm going to move my, my inductive clamp to the rear cylinder. Excuse me, getting in the shot. And we'll do the same thing, I should be able to see the yellow mark. Right, let's start her up again. So I got the same, I got 15 degrees of advance. Well, fuck me sideways. I can sort of see a... Okay, we might be onto something here. I'm not going to bother filming it with my phone, you'll have to set my word for it. I've not gone off. Um, I can't see a yellow mark. I don't know whether maybe it's a shit colour for this light. I'm just going to change the colour of that mark. I'll do it, I don't know what would be a good colour, blue or green maybe. Let me do that quickly, change the colour of that mark, because I literally I can't see... A yellow paint mark at all. I can see what looks like a couple of lines flicking by, but I can't make out you know what they are. Let's change the colour of that mark. We might be onto something here. So guys in case you're interested, uh, might help if I have the right size socket, eh? In case you're interested, I'm finding top this dead centre just by rotating the engine and pokey pokey down the plug hole here's a word of advice never ever ever rotate a crankshaft like this with the ignition switched on because occasionally you can have a spark event if you like and there's some fuel in the combustion chamber and yeah broken wrist don't do it. Ask me how I know. Didn't actually broke my wrist, but fucking hell, a little bit of poo came out. Um, so, we just... Somewhere around there... Oh, went too far. Somewhere about there, so I'm just eyeballing this thing. Going up and down. And then you can shine your torch in the hole. What I've done with my torch, and yeah, there's a yellow mark right there. I reckon I should be able to see that with the strobe light. I'm going to change that mark to green. I think it'll be easier to see with the strobe light. 
but I think we might be on the right lines here with ignition timing. The other thing worth maybe mentioning is, you know, I'm looking at top dead center here now. I don't know whether I'm at top dead center exhaust, so the top of the exhaust stroke or the top of the compression stroke where the actual igniting of the fuel happens. It doesn't matter because this, the way this system works is a wasted spark system. So it fires every top dead center regardless, just because it, there isn't enough resolution in the crank position sensors on the design of it. So it, it has to fire at TDC exhaust and TDC compression, just in case you were wondering. Um, right, so get some brake cleaner and get that paint off there. Turn it green. Let's try again. Fucking hell, a load of fat people running past my house. Sorry, that's a bit fattest. They're running, which is more than I can fucking do at the moment. Um, right, so I've gobbed a load of green paint on that TDC mark. Now, I should be able to see that. If I can't see that green mark with the timing light, there's no ambiguity. We have an ignition timing problem. Why we have an ignition timing problem is anyone's guess, but we're inching closer to a, a fix. Okay. Whoa! I don't see the mark, guys. No green mark at all. Oh! Oh, there's a thing. I'm never going to be able to film this. If you listen to the engine note, when that cylinder fires, I see the green mark. Well, that's interesting. Piece of revs a bit with a choke. Yeah, there, I saw it. I heard the bang in the exhaust pipe, and I saw the green mark at the same time. And there, there, again. Okay, I'm getting oil everywhere, let's turn this off. Well, well, well. Ignition timing is moving around, it would seem. So, I don't know whether you could hear that sort of change in exhaust note. Every time I heard that pop in the exhaust, I saw the green mark momentarily. Does that make sense? <laughs> Fucking hell, stop saying that, Jib. I'm not doing another take. You've got, you got to roll with it. So every time I heard the sort of cylinder come alive, just momentarily, I also saw the green mark. I'm getting the strobe all the time, so we're not losing spark. It suggests the timing is moving around. Right, what now? Let's have a look at the aftermarket ECU that's buried up there. It's one of those, look. And look at this, look how easy those plugs come out. Not that I think that's the issue. Interestingly, so I've just spoken to the customer on the phone and the dealer, the stealer that last worked on this, that put this ECU on him, had told him, and this makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever, that the old ECU had been sent away for repair and they'd put the old ECU in a new case. What? That's obviously not what's happened. This is an aftermarket ECU. I think what's happened, the original problem was the carburetors and they've baked in, didn't fix the carbs and they've baked in another problem because I am 98.7% convinced now that the ignition timing on those rear cylinders is not correct. I'm going to do another little bit of testing with my oscilloscope. Did I mention this already? I'm going to take the firing event, either um, HD side or 
primary side of the coil. So get the spark event and look at crank position signals and try and figure out some sort of way with the scope of putting, you know, 720 degrees of crank rotation and see how the firing event corresponds to the ignition pickup and then do the same with the rear cylinders and see if we can see, see the timing shift on the oscilloscope. At that point, then I'm calling ECU. What do you reckon, guys? Is this the end of part three? I don't know, it might be. Let's see how long it is in the edit. If I can squeeze in the oscilloscope, and thus I will. And then hopefully the final part, part four, will be the fix. But I think I'm gonna start hunting for an ECU unless some kind person out, out there has got one we can beg, borrow or steal. Onwards. Okay guys, I'm very quickly gonna show you some oscilloscope nuss. The edit is already over half an hour long and I, yeah, it's getting a bit long this video now. Without boring you all to sleep, let me just explain what's going on here. The green trace and the red trace are crank position sensor signals. The green one, if I've got my wires the right way around, the green one is the rear cylinder that's playing up. The red one is the front cylinder that's running okay. And these two, the lower two, the blue and the yellow, their primary ignition, their primary ignition uh, waveform, so effectively the firing event now these coils are ground side switched. It's very <sighs> waffle on Jim Bob. It's very, there's lots of terminology, terminology just sort of banded around with regards to ECUs, igniters, engine control modules, CDI boxes. This is ground side switched, this ignition system. And technically if I'm remembering correctly it was uh, TCI back in the day that's what Yamaha called it Trans transistor controlled ignition which effectively means it's sw the coil is switched on and off using a transistor so the coils have a, a live to them and they're switched with a negative so they ground side switch coils so even though it says CDI on the on the red box you saw it's not a CDI system which is very confusing anyway so Top two are crank position, bottom two are spark event. So what I'm gonna do guys, just so we're not over complicating things, I'm just gonna show you the crank position sensor signals first. So let's turn these two channels off. Like that. Let's bring that down a bit. Let's start it up and I'll show you the crank signals. There's your crank signals, let's go with a slightly longer time base, uh, 10 milliseconds maybe. Interestingly, on this oscilloscope, which is vastly superior to the Snap-on Vantage Pro that I use, the amplitude of these signals looks about the same. So that, I think, is definitely a red herring. Anyway, so we've got the the green trace which is the cylinder that's playing up and the red trace which is the good cylinder if I turn on if I've got this wired correctly if I turn this channel on okay you'll see from I don't want to go too in depth in this but this blue trace is the firing event right how to explain this blue trace let me pause it and I'll turn the engine off and I'll just talk you through it. So what we've got here is, if we zoom in slightly, now it's jumping around quite a bit, but let's minimize that out of the way. Can we minimize that? Yes. This, um, how to explain, without getting too far into this, this blue trace is the primary ignition coil voltage. What we've got here, see this downward line on the blue trace? That's the coil being grounded. So 
this is basically the turn on point of the coil and we get the spark when the coil turns off so that this spike here going upwards that's the actual spark starting and then this little jaggedy line there that's called the spark line or the burn line for the spark <laughs> hopefully that's enough information so we can see that the firing event is happening actually most of the time this is slightly out of sync but the the turn on point of the coil is in line with this point of the crank position sensor in green let me show you what the bad cylinder looks like and then maybe it will make more sense so let's run that keep running that scope let me in fact let's turn them all on I'll turn on the yellow channel and start it back up okay spread them out a bit can you see the difference between the yellow and the blue trace I know there's a lot going on on this screen but see how the the blue spark event is sort of moving in unison with the crank position sensor whereas the yellow spark event is basically all over the place let me just pause it it should be pretty obvious to you guys now how different and the time of the spark event on the bad cylinder which is the yellow trace if you know if we wanted to get super technical we could bring in some uh, let me show you uh, some rulers this is the powerful thing with a scope like this and you can have phase rulers look so I can turn on I don't really want to get into this now but we can for those of you that maybe haven't seen um, this done before so if we move this phase ruler to here which is the spark event on this blue channel and then we go all the way over to this spark event so actually that's not true we need another spark event I haven't got enough info on the screen it would be back over here somewhere this would be 360 this would be 720 degrees of crank rotation can you see here actually what I can do is I can put that 360 line there it won't go far enough along but that 360 needs to be on this blue trace here that's one rotation of the crankshaft so you can start to see the relationship between I know I'm sending you all to sleep sorry guys you can start to see the relationship between crank position signal and the firing event the cylinder that's running correctly which is the the blue and the green trace is very different to the red and yellow trace so we've got a good crank position signal on the red for this dodgy cylinder but the spark event is literally leaping around all over the place we could analyze a lot more than that and filter it and get some cleaner waveforms etc but at this point it's bad timing on these on these rear cylinders this is it's night and day obvious at this point I'm calling ECU so that's that that's the little bit of oscilloscope now so I don't want to get any more into it than that you, I could spend an hour talking about this super interesting subject um, yeah Pico scope amazing tool let's say no more about that I need an ECU has anybody out there got one I've had a look on eBay there's some possible maybes out there anyway I think that's it guys we must be close to 40 minutes now for this video I'll see you for the fix in part four